going on with y'all. Good afternoon. All the Havens Hills. Oh, shit. All these Hills. So, uh, what's going on, brother? Big bad boy. Hey, Jay, what's up, brother? What bro, would be like? Oh, man. D man. Hey, Evan. What's up, what's up? You know, I just came to drop a couple gems on some people that uh probably just getting started, might be starting, and probably experiencing a lot of this stuff already. But uh, there's a lot of people out here making money in trucking. That's the introduction to everybody. There's a lot of people out here making money in trucking. But all of them ain't dealing with trucking. You know? A lot of it is dealing with trucking. Most of them are service based, dealing with trucking. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Hey, Ray, nah, it ain't Sunday. We doing a little garage talk, but yeah, I just, I just got finished. Just got finished doing some work, and uh, I just had it on my mind to give y'all a little something today, man. It ain't gonna be too long. Last video was super long. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all skip to the end of that video, but uh. Yeah, man, come come to Holly Child about some things to avoid when you start your high shot company, your flatbed company, step dead company, heavy haul company, dry van company, reefer company, little red wagon on the 10-speed bicycle company, picking up can. Start this out by saying good afternoon to everybody. I hope everybody doing well. What's going on, Jason? What's up, Jason? Jay Marshall, what's up, good brother? Sleepy Goat, what's up, bro? And Ray, man, if y'all would shoot, jump out of there, jump back in, share it, make it propagate, do what it does. But this is something that everybody go through. This is something that everybody that, that does this. You get a DOT number, you get an MC number, you get any kind of number. You won't do anything involving transportation. This is going to be part of the problem that you're going to have to wade through before you even get your furlough. Then when you had your furlough, you ain't made a fucking dime yet. Listen to me, y'all. This is some of the stuff that's going to happen to you. As you sit around the house, you be trying to put your shit together and just make sure everything's straight and all that. Hey, Denitra. Hey, y'all, shout out to the uh, Bella, the dog. She was sick. She back at home now. And my mama dog, Bella, scared the hell out of her last night. I, we thought Bella was finna leave here. But back to the subject, God is good, Bella made it. We love the doggies. We love dogs. I ain't no cat person, but I love dogs. Uh, okay. All right, now back to what I was saying. In your first week, really not even having an act of authority. As soon as you go on and apply, to the FMCSA to get your 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 MC number, your DOT number, and you shopping around for insurance and trying to figure out what's the best way to go, you're gonna get a ton of phone calls. Cause we in the information age now, and all databases, even though they say they secure and they don't share your information, I bet they don't share your information. They fucking sell it. That's what they do, they sell it. They ain't, they ain't sharing your personal information. They selling your personal information. So, within probably 48 hours of you paying your $300 to the FMCSA, your phone is finna start going crazy. Anybody in the comments got an MC number? Do this for a living? No, your phone probably still going crazy. It's a year. Maybe a year later, you've been going a whole year, two years, your phone still be going crazy to the point where, like, I'm almost in my fifth year. And 
it's still some assholes that don't understand who they talking to on the phone. And I hurry up and make them understand who the fuck I am. Stop playing with me. Put me on your do not call list. Stop fucking playing with me. And this is what I'm finna tell you about them people that fucking playing with you. These are the people that they're gonna call you and say, man, you know what? You know I can find your BOC3. I can do your UCR. I can do, I, I can hook you up with some dispatching. I can do all that for a small fee. I can be your accountant. Hurts, give me love. Hey, you need accountants that understand trucking. Listen to me good. That's the first one. You need an accountant that understands trucking. No, you need a tax professional that understands trucking. An accountant keeps the books. Accounting is only keeping up with what goes in and what goes out and what stays. That's accounting. Don't let folk tell you that accounting involved trucking is different than accounting in any business. It is. The numbers you work with are vastly different. The tax law you have to deal with is slightly different. But accounting is accounting. I made this. I spent this. I have this left over. This is profit. I made this. I spent this. I don't have anything left over. I went in the hole. That's a loss. Ta-da. But what they'll do, they'll call you and say, hey, man, for the low, low price of about $125 a month, we can keep up with your stuff, make sure all your accounting is done, and we'll send you a report on everything you did at the end of the year. I'm going to say this. If you're starting a trucking company, flatbed or otherwise, and you are one truck, even two trucks, yeah, even two trucks, trust me, you keep up with that shit yourself, especially that first year. <laughs> What's up, Freddie? Tighten up, baby. Now, in your first year, if you are lucky, you probably run about about 240 though, if you if you lucky your first year. Because the whole first 12 months that's included in your first year, you ain't gonna be working. Not unless you got a, unless you got something lined up with a direct or you know somebody that needs your services and that's the reason you started your company to help service them and then move on to other customers. Okay, so for let's just say out of the first 12 months that you're going to have your authority active, you probably ain't going to be working for about 10 of them. And that's, that's, that's conservatively 10 of them because there's going to be some days you don't have a load. There's going to be some days you're in spots where you don't have... Man, I, I just came back from, from doing my due diligence at the Grand Lodge and playing some music and doing some other stuff and cranking up some old charitable shit. Yep. But yeah, 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 I'm, I'm about to wind down. But before I got all the way unspiff, I said, let me go ahead and just drop a little knowledge on these people for the night because there's some people that going to get lost in the sauce just because help look like help. But who the hell are you helping? Yeah. Red Rider said so he learned about the accounting the hard way and he does it himself now. And that's why I advocate with a lot of people that that speak against using factoring companies and stuff like that and different databases and spreadsheets. I, I advocate for it because that expense is going to be a write-off anyway. And if you would like to find you a factory company, I do have one I recommend in the description. Click the link below for tabs, trans and finance. Some people don't like it because they percentages and all that, but I say they system is better than yours. Mm -hmm. I see y'all sell a lot of them. OTR, auntie. I just see y'all shit. I should bet it, y'all. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing about it, RTN, they ride transportation. They got plenty of money. Why they system look like shit? Why they app don't look good? Why they app ain't all inclusive with everything you ever did in life? Why your whole database ain't on that app? Why they just trying to why they just trying to um sell you other stuff in the app and point you toward the fuel that's cheaper in their app that go with their fleet and they get credit for your fuel. You say something, but them folks make money off you pumping that fuel. I'd rather use money for that, make my own money off pumping that food. Y'all didn't know that, did That's a little tidbit for y'all. All these people that got these different fuel cards, they're connected to different trucking companies. When you use their fuel card, they act like you part of their fleet. Believe me, them little 10, 12 cents that they give you off, 
They get 90 cent off at the fleet. They keeping the rest of your change. I'd rather get the 90 cent off on with the mutt flip, put my cash back card on there, and get the points on what I spent anyway, and you would have to pay that on time and watch my credit go here instead of putting money in the other four pocket every week. Come on, people. All right. If that didn't help somebody, I, I think it did. Mud flap. Check the link in the description. Click on mud flap. Save your $40 on your first fill up. Mm -hmm. On that link that's in the description on the video. Yeah, it's a link right there. $40 in your pocket. And just buy. Get what? Every time you pull up with your high shot, you save by $50. Every time you pull up with your 18 wheel, like me, pump 250, 300 gallon, save about $150. Get yeah, what? 10 fill stops, which probably happens in about uh, eight, nine days. 10 days, 10 fuel stops on me. Fifteen hundred goddamn dollars. What I look like? Giving that to somebody because I didn't know no building. How should I have it? Didn't tell me about it. So get yeah, what? Link in the description for tab. Drop you some, Roger. I just saved nine hundred dollars last month collectively. The boy said he about to drop me something about that mud flap. He said nine hundred dollars collectively last month. And bro, that's a real number. Especially right now, that's a real number. That place you pull up, say a whole dollar or something, and get you two, three percent back on whatever your cash card doing that you got hooked up to it. So that's the one thing. Okay. And like I said, I got a link in the description for the for the factory. And they also have a fuel card that ain't got nothing to do with them. Huh? They got roadside assist, they got a hell of a tire plan. Mm -hmm. All that deal. But let's get back to what we were talking about. People that's calling you with the flip flap. Okay. So we got the accounting people, call them. We got the compliance people. Say, Jack, I want to ask how many times would you feel in a thousand miles? A thousand miles. I fill up and run a thousand miles. I have 300 gallon tank. I technically run 1,500 miles, but I do about 12 and then pull in both of my tanks be on a quarter. So basically, I drive from Mississippi to Denver just about. I don't see nobody. When I was in the high shop, check this out. I was getting like 11 to 13 miles a gallon. And I had like 90 gallons at my disposal, which you'll probably use about 80 of them. You know what I'm saying? And I run eight, 900 miles before I need some fuel. But, but since our clock allows us to stop every night for 10 hours, I would just wait till the second day when I get ready to pull in for the end of the day and just fill up both tanks, drive for another two, three days. And therefore, you're not stopping in the middle of runs trying to get to the ship or the receiver and waiting in line for fuel while inconsiderate people are messing your day up. So, yeah, auxiliary tank, auxiliary tank, auxiliary tank. Fuel. I'm screaming mud flap to the end. I'm screaming mud flap. I need y'all to go get all your basic truck stop stuff because you never want to be in, a, in an area. <sighs> they do, but not all the way up in the corner, bro. They got them, but they not all the way in the corner. All my mouth love bus flap, but he up there around there on uh, Ohio and Philly. He running West Virginia, Virginia, a lot and all that there. And then he be banging with that mud flap. Shout out all my mouth, man. He ain't on here right now, but that my guy. Y'all know all my mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. So, now we got. Oh, and say Jack, I'm going to say this. If you're running a high shot and you and you like, man, I ain't going to get the auxiliary tank till I make some money. The auxiliary tank will actually slow you down from making money for reasons I just pretty much stated when you sit in the line waiting on people. But also, it's going to force you to buy fuel in places that are that's just expensive when you wouldn't normally have to stop. So that's two things. And also, when you talk about driving places that I've been, a lot of y'all have been there. You want to go, you want to go to Albuquerque. You want to go to, let's so say you want to go to Denver. It's not as bad as Denver. Uh, you want to go to Salt Lake City via Denver through Wyoming. You want to catch, you want to go Sioux City, Iowa. You want to go to Lancaster, Michigan. 
You won't go to Braintree, Vermont. Way up there. You won't go up a mission. You won't be able to go anywhere you want to go. Without an auxiliary tank, check this out. This shit going to fool you when you first buy your truck. This for the high shot guy. When you... Damn, $387 more money for that. The hell you were, Red Rider. That's a good free price, 387 Y'all holler at Red Rider, else and where he was at. But anyway, damn, threw me off what I was finna say. Damn, $387. Uh, shit. Oh, what you want to understand about not having that tank right there is that when you buy your high shot truck straight off the lot and you ride around in it while you getting your authority right and you get all that stuff right, you're going to come to find out that diesel burns slow. Anybody give me a thumbs up or one in the comment if you know that an unladen diesel-powered vehicle gets some extremely good gas mileage. Anybody? That 5'9 out there in the driveway, get what? That motherfucker 28. 28, man. By itself, just, yeah, just, yeah, no trailer, no nothing. Just, I put the fuel in, like I told y'all. I don't know how long y'all been with the channel, but when I went to buy the Gator Made trailer, and fuel was super cheap, I put like $92 worth of diesel in my truck in Jackson, and I put, put, put it that thing all the way to Somerset, Kentucky, without getting no fuel. I hooked up to the trailer. Went to the fuel station. I ain't even have an auxiliary tank. Filled it up and made it all the way to Memphis with the trailer before I felt compelled to put some more diesel in it. But I basically drove like 520 miles on a tank of diesel. You put 520, you put a tank of uh, gas in your car and most times can't get 520 miles out of it. So you throw me a one in the comment if you if you can get from this synopsis that diesel burns slow, right? Okay. Well, that fuel saving diminishes with more weight, more wind resistance, all that stuff that happens when you hook a trailer up, when you put the load on there. So now, now, when you leave Albuquerque, headed back to Amarillo, you're going to find out that that's about three and a half, four hours. Maybe a little bit long, maybe six. And there's just really not a lot of fuel stops. Really not a lot of fuel stops in between now. What you'll find out is that truck that you used to pump death, listen to me, listen to me. You used to pump your whole death tank full, you pump your whole fuel tank full, put a put around, handle your bed and ride for like a week and a half. You know what I'm saying? You just ride like that. As soon as you hook the trailer up, and you put 9,500 pounds on the trailer, and let's just say they trick you into pulling containers, which is a parachute, now you're getting eight miles of the gallon instead of 19, 20, 21. You know what I'm saying? With that 5.9 I had. Now, instead of stopping every week and a half, you're stopping every three and a half hours. <laughs> Hold on now. Can anybody tell us five, that without that auxiliary tank, pull a high shot, about three and a half hours. You need to find somebody with some diesel or your ass shall be walking. A lot of people are like, I didn't know. I'm finna get into it. I thought, hold on, I went from 500 miles to 200 miles. Kendra Holler. Hey, that's my guy that bought um, the Gator Maid trailer. Ain't that trailer heavy, man? That's a tank, but ain't that trailer heavy. Your ride home with the trailer was way different than your ride here from West Texas without the trailer. Can you testify to that, Kendrick? Your drive back home was significantly more expensive. What's up, John Tank? What's up, bro? Over here, just talking about that first year stuff. The little stuff that, like, from day one, not way down the line after you start and out. No, day one. I'm talking about the people that going to be calling your phone, trying to sell you all these good accounting services, 
uh, they gonna be talking about, man, we do your compliance, we get your IFTA, your IRP, UCR, BOC3, and they gonna always use definition, de uh, my bad, abbreviations. They gonna always use the acronym because you're new and they want the shit to sound real technical. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they, they appreciate it. But they gonna be like, oh man, your UCR, your BOC3, I can do that. What's that? Oh man, that's a very important government form, which it is, that, that you gotta have, which you do. And man, we don't want to mess it up, which is kind of hard to do. UCR, Unified Carrier Registration, simply go on there and say, I have these many trucks. They're going to say, oh, you got these many trucks? Okay, it's this much money. And get what? The companies that charge you to set up and put in your BOC3 and your Unified Carrier Registration and your driver file and yada, 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 for charge about seven, eight, nine hundred dollars to do that. And it's a $150 ordeal at the most. At the most. 387, Mud Flag in Memphis. Mac Hot Shot. Show them how to do it, Mac. Show them how to do it. That's how you do it, baby. Jack, how much would you spend on fuel a week? On me, it depends on what I'm trying to do. Like last week, I showed the fuck out. <clears throat> As I do. I came back outside, I showed the fuck out. Took my ass from here, La Junta, Colorado. Dead head from La Junta to Pueblo, which is about 55 miles. I had a dead Let's show it here. Picked up a little something, something. Go to Austin. Hmm. That was the railroad shit. They talking about railroad strike. I'm going to the rail yard, ho. Soon they talking about they want slack up, bitch. I'm picking up all the slack. I hope your people. Get their mind right because get what every piece of slack they got, I want it. I want all the smoke, I want all the slack, I want all the slackers. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna get your motherfucking money. So live. So get what we come down from Pueblo, drop down in Austin. I said, man, I don't see nothing in Austin that looked that good. And I don't feel like driving clean to San Antonio, and I, cause that's south. And I'm trying to go, I'm trying to go a little more north and east. I ain't trying to go south and west, so I ain't going down there. And, and Waco right up north from me, so let me look at Waco and this and that and the other, and see what we got over there. And lo and behold, I said, "Hey man, I'm over here in Austin. See this stuff spreads. She ain't gonna tell you right here. Hey, I'm in Austin right now. I got a four day foot step there." I got about 50,000 pounds of capacity because the way my setup is. I appreciate that, DD. Love you. I, I, and get what? Get what I do. I said, hey, man, I'm going to pull me a Pasha K move today. I'm going to pull me an old hot shot haver from 2018 19 move today. I'm going to compound me some freight. So, yeah, because why? I got there, everything around me. Seem to be very unreasonable. This is something that they can't show you. Wow, Dominique, I appreciate you. You click my link, Dominique. I hope you click my link, bro, bro. Dominique said, I just created a mud flap account today. I've been using only free spar EFS cards, shaking my head, mud flap at better price, an extra 72 cents. Get what? That 72 cent probably be a dollar somewhere. But that about as close as you're going to get to what a big old corporation probably going to play for free. But get what? Get what? When you use the fleet card, that discount real, you don't see it on your statement because your statement comes from them. They get a statement from the fuel supplier that look way different. They get your money, pay their fuel bill, and keep the change. Dun, dun, dun. I'm taking some game now. They get your, they get your money for the said fuel bill. Deduct what the real fuel bill is and just keep the change every week on about 1000 2000 5000 drive. Whoever signed up for that shit got their card in their hand. Them folks make whatever the difference in what you've been spending every week off you without you ever knowing. My evidence said we saved about $100 yesterday using mud flap. Get in there, Emily. What George is, man? Y'all get in there. I've been seeing y'all moving. I'm so proud of y'all. Ebony them, they participated in the shadow system. 
really good students, as everybody have been. They doing their thing, and they keeping it moving. And get what? George ain't about no play. George been out there having been shit. Look at your mind, right? Joy act like he on a mission or something, don't it, man? Yeah, but they ain't Joy acting like he on a mission or something. Y'all act like y'all trying to do something with y'all said. My boy said he quit for the win. Ebony says she, he, she quit the win. They quit their job, did all that shit. And get what? To win. Boy, he had some good, comfortable ass job. Say so he head to Florida right now. I hope you looking ahead of him. Hope you looking ahead of him. And you might want to do what I'm talking about right now, what I did at Austin. When you start looking at these places, rates suck right now. And you're in an unfamiliar place with some brokers that you don't normally use that ain't got no respect on your name like that. Over there in the middle of the West Texas area, they ain't got no respect on no name over there. Except for the fact that over there in West Texas, them brokers don't rock with me. They rock with one of my own operator that was over there. And uh, he was doing very good over there, but at the same time, he ain't no dog like me. He's a very, very good trucker. He's a very good business owner. He's a very good um, 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 accounting person. He's good with money, all that good stuff. But he ain't no dog. I'm a fucking dog. See, that is certain shit, you know, it is what it is. Ebony says she's doing <laughs> Sure did. Let's go. Coming out of Florida tomorrow. Okay, so I'm in Austin. Pick it up something, I said, man, they ain't got no respect on it. I tried to call a couple people for some brokerages that I have dealt with in my area, but it ended up being different agents that I ain't trying to hear what I'm talking about too much because they used to talk to other people. I mean, ain't no problem with that at all. It is what it is. How do you fix that solution? When they don't want to do what you want to do, you do what you want to do now. So what I want to do here. If y'all gonna pay, let's say they was paying $2, $2.20, which some folks took that and rolled for 48,000 pounds full of tarp. Kid y'all sell. That's what you do. Take time, set your lower board back. I know, man. I'm in the garage, bro. I'm in the garage, bro. I'm in the garage, man. I'm under that light, man. That fluorescent light in the garage. I'm trying to smoke me a cigar without fucking the house up. But at the same time, hey, I had to revert back to some of the stuff I did in 18, 19. Which, like I say, it ain't really reverting back because I do it when I get ready. But we're going to find the lightest, smallest, most insignificant piece of freight that's going our direction. Get as much as we can for it, which in one of the cases was about a dollar eighty cent. Do y'all see where I'm going with this? They want you to come across there with four to eight thousand pounds, full of tarp, six foot to eight foot tarp. I don't even care a fucking eight foot tarp. Don't own one. I don't suggest y'all do that. But I don't even own an eight foot tarp because just that's not in the means of what I'm gonna do. I don't risk it. So, absolutely. Man, here we go. Here we go. Hey, do y'all call me later on tonight when I get all the live? Just let me know what's going on. Cause I show been damn interest. I just didn't want to bother y'all, man. I know y'all be dialing my phone call. Another another shadow Simpson person. People. But anyway, got that on there. About a dollar eighty-five. Hmm, somewhere up in there. Going from um Austin to Abbeville, Louisiana. Now, I'm lying. From Austin to Metairie, Metairie, Louisiana. Then I said, man, okay. I had got a decent ass price on that. It was a thousand dollars on like like uh uh like 460 miles. It was something like that. 450, 460 miles, something like that. Thousand dollar man. On the uh on that stone, I had some stone I had on there. Some it was four pallets. It was eleven thousand pound. Basically a hot shot load. It had to be air ride though. So then I ain't really, I ain't really steal from everybody. I stole from the air ride man. So it ain't a lot of people that got air ride on no hot shot. So really, that's a step day load. But I got it. It was partial. It only took up eight feet. Bam! Throw that at the front of the bottom deck. Got back on the lower board. Look. 
I open my radius up. Now, this is how you play the game. This is how you play the game. I picked my route. I said, hey, man, I'm leaving Austin. Nah, I'm right here. I'm going to leave Austin. I'm going to go zoop, over here to Metairie. Metairie is right next door to New Orleans. Right next door. I probably, eh, I right next door. My hour, hour and a half. Something like that. Ain't too far. So, grab that in Austin. I say I'm finna go from Austin, I'm finna catch 10, I'm finna go all the way across 10 in New Orleans. What cities are on 10 that you think of in Texas, down at the bottom of Texas, that it might be some money in? Anybody say Houston? I gotta drive through Houston anyway. I got hella room on the trail. I got hella weight lift. MLY Airport is there. There it is. Okay, that's another location. So, so get what? I look ahead. I said, I said, let me move, let me move my origin in my in my low board to Houston and do about 200, well, about 150 miles of Houston because I was probably like 150 miles away. So that's gonna encompass where I am and where I'm going. That 150 miles from Houston is gonna make a circle that's actually touching Austin. So I know if it's something going toward Houston, that I can pick up on the way going through Houston, or right past Houston, or almost to Louisiana, all up in there so I can get something else on this truck. But what I'm not gonna do, hmm, what I'm not gonna do, bow money in the way too, that's a good play to look. What I'm not gonna do is sit in Austin with that dollar 85 cent, nor am I gonna run all the way across there with it by itself. Well, Jonathan, how you do that? Jonathan, how you, how you avoid sitting in Austin and waiting on another load to pop up some kind of way, or either go ahead and taking that load and getting it there in the morning, which I did get it there the next morning, and not just have that one thing on your trailer. Well, I'm glad you asked. It's a simple method that I like to use called give me some goddamn time. <laughs> give me some time. And the crazy thing about it, a lot of people at the Bible said we have not because we ask not. Especially on a partial. They said, how about this partial? And da, da, da. Okay, give me two days to get it there. Since it's a partial. Well, it got to be there tomorrow. Well, I need tomorrow type of money. Y'all trying to get me to do it for seven hundred. I'm going to need a thousand. But me being me and knowing how I move and what I'm able to do and how, I, how my mind works with the freight and how I'm able to compound two, three, four loads if I want to any day of the week, I know I'm going to still get it done. I'm going to be sitting right there where I need to be with it in the morning in Louisiana. But get what I'm finna do. Look on the low board ahead. Oh, low and behold. Houston, Texas. Now, it's like 1030 in the morning once I get that first one on there and I'm ready to go. So you really don't have time. So what you do is, you look at the load board and you start going toward the direction you need to be going. Then if you need to, in an hour or so of driving, stop. Look again, give it a really, really good look. You still don't see nothing? You got time to get there tomorrow. Drive another hour or two, stop. If you've been doing it long enough, you know the most frustrating shit in the world is to look at the load board, not see nothing for like, a hundred miles, and then you mess up and drive a hundred and fifty miles, look on the load board, and there go a low hundred mile behind you. That's some frustrating shit. So, how do you avoid that? If you have a, a steady clock, good clock, you got time to get there, and your trailer looking pretty empty, looking pretty, 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 you know, pretty empty, because you only got one load on there, it's a little partial, drive out. Stop. Look. Drive out. Stop. Look again. Drive another hour. Stop. Look again. And when you're looking, I always set the, the, uh, the parameters to be a major city that's in front of you. And make the radius go all the way around, all the way back to almost where you are. So we not looking at nothing backwards. And, and, and I mean, 20, 30 miles, we'll go back. But we're not running 57, 8, 100 miles backwards to get a load because when you get that and you dead head and then you start driving from where you dead headed from, you just messed up your rate per mile. So 
What ends up happening is, while I'm riding, I pull over, I look, I see another load in Houston. So, okay, got a load in Houston, I call them. And Houston to Abbeville was about, Maybe 220 miles, something like that. And uh, I got that for 500, which I think I could have did better. But at the time, I'm, I'm trying to get back to the house and passing through it. And there's no excuses involved. I got a thousand on the trailer. I'm gonna put the other 500 on there, which turns my trip from Austin. To a mid ye from the longest place to the other longest place into a basin of 1500 mile run. Okay. But that ain't bad. Because in total, we still at 460 miles because we picked up stuff on the way. How many of y'all been watching the channel enough to know what compound freight is? It ain't combining freight, it's compounding the freight. Because at the moment, I was already driving from Austin to just about New Orleans, when I picked up that extra in the middle, that changed the whole rate per mile for the trip. Or you could even go as far as say, I was at $1.85 till I got to Houston. And when I got to Houston, I was at $3.85. Almost $4 a mile with a half a trailer, about 14 k on there, and some of the best gas miles I didn't got that motherfucker since I owned it. That's what you do. You don't play the game the way they want you to play the game. That go for the high shot guy too. A little more work will get you a lot better results. My folks be like, well, Jonathan, you take, you take, you take, you take one load every day. You just put one load on your tray. We see you all the time. You got the crane mess on you. You got that concrete on there. You got that uh, 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 shit steel on there. You got them cores on there. But what you understand is, I might be doing one load going out. <laughs> somebody, somebody in the comment, put out and back right there for the folk that don't know no better. Put, put out and back in the comment. Anybody that know what the business is when it just be one load, think about one load twice a day. Ain't that the same to take it too low one way and dead head and back? Math is a thing. It's, it's one of them things. I fuck with it. I'm back, baby. I'm back. So, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you don't do that. You ain't been watching the channel long enough. Still <laughs> take out the album back on it. You just ain't been watching long enough. Because it's scenarios in which you change what you're doing and it pivot in order to meet the demand of what's going on in the market. So, it's a trick. Next one, hold on. That's a good explanation about what happened with that there right there. Now, going back to it's a trick. Now, I'm gonna step on some toes like a motherfucker here. Might step on mine a little bit. But, predatory dispatching services. Yeah, it's hard not to do it with a high shot. That's what Kendra said. It's hard not to compound that freight with a high shot. You're going to make money. That what made me who I am today, bro. For real. Remember I said in the first beginning of the video that in your first year, you probably be lucky to work 10 months out of 12. Probably do about 200, 250 load. When I run a high shot, how you think I got my load count to be about 397? Because I kept two, three, four of them on there. Two, three, four of them on there. Two, three, four of them on there. I rarely, unless you saw me at the last drop of the series, didn't have nothing else on there. And I was going to get something else for the return because I was doing an album back that went all the way to Denver. And I was doing a week-long album back and being back by Friday. But predatory dispatch, sir. Well, try to hold up. You be always talk shit about dispatch. Don't you dispatch trucks sometimes? Sure do. Sure do. What makes a dispatch service predatory? Huh? What makes a dispatch service predatory? So I'm going to say, it's the dispatch service way of protecting itself. A lot of this stuff I'm going to say. It's good business model for the dispatch service. It is. 
It is. It is. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with folk that new to an industry, new to an industry, don't know no better, and for some help, they'll sign anything. That's where the bullshit come in. It ain't about the dispatch service charging you, charging you no money, or nothing like that. It ain't, it ain't the dispatch service, how, what the percentage of your load they charge. That's the least of your motherfucking words. That's the least of your word what they charge for your for their services. Some folk charge five. I don't know nobody do it for five. Some folk charge five. Some folk charge eight. Some folk charge ten. Some folk charge fifteen. Some folk get you on their number and put it all inclusive and just take thirty percent from you and be like, this for the being on the number, the insurance, and dispatch. We take the whole thirty percent. And to each his own. I don't give a fuck what you doing. That's your being that between you and the dude that fucking you. Okay. So Hey, right. predatory dispatch, sir. All right, first of all, all these being the model got to have a safety net for the person that running the company, which is the dispatch, sir. So most time, if not all the time, you're going to have a contract. Most time what that contract states is that on the behalf of your company, said dispatch service can sign papers for you, Said dispatch service can act on your behalf when it comes to negotiating prices on the load. The dispatch service also, in some cases, will say, hey, man, you don't even have to do no paperwork. Once you drop your load out, just send me the paperwork. I will factor it for you. I will actually give you the money straight to your bank account, and you don't have to do nothing but drive the truck. Just give me 10%. Ain't nothing. Give me 10%. I'm going to do everything. You ain't got to never worry about that. Just, 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 just be where you're supposed to be. Drop off. Send me the paperwork. At the end of the week, I got you. Some of y'all dispatch service good as y'all got an address that's a P.O. box. And I'm going to leave that alone. Some of y'all dispatch good that y'all got an address that's a P.O. box. Okay, anybody dig what I'm saying? Put a one in the comments if you can understand what I'm saying. That some of you dispatchers that doing what you're doing, it blessed that you did not file none of your stuff with no real address. Y'all filed it with a P.O. box. Can anybody put a one in the comment if you understand what I'm saying? Real talk. Because get what? If it was a real address, bitch, you'll be dead by now. You'll be dead by now. Because I know dispatch service that a, that a, that a made for run for two weeks. And send in all that paperwork, da 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 da. I'm gonna get it to the fact that I'm gonna And get what? On that 10th day, you send in that last invoice for them two weeks, and they owe you about $12,000. Get what they do? Change their number and go find something else to do with their time and start ignoring you. And run off with your money. Now, you done, you done ran up all type of credit cards. You done told mud flap a new asshole. You've been running for two weeks. You got about thirty-five hundred dollars worth of fuel get drawn out. You got expenses. You got household bills. You got a truck note, a trailer note, and insurance. That somebody just got damn ran off on you. Finesse two times. Ran off on. So it's a trick. All that full service shit. We gotta understand what we doing here. We running businesses that are part of a $90 billion machine. When you start doing this business, you're going to be just like me when I start. You're not going to have any idea of the amount of money that you could possibly make. You just know it's a lot of money. It's, it, it, it can sound like it. Everybody says it's a lot of money. It looks like a lot of money. So I don't really know what I'm going to make, which is the job of everything. I don't know what I'm going to make. That's why I say I'm tripping like a trap. Same way when I come out with that grab back in the day. I ain't know what I was going to make. I just know I'm going to make something. But now you you enamored with the fact that, hey, I'm going to make money. Fine on. But I don't know how to get to work. I got me a good dispatcher. They say this, 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 and then. They're going to do it all for me. I'm going to run this. You know? And I ain't got to think about nothing but just. 
be in this truck and drive. Okay. You do that. Second thing they like to do. Oh, it's a weekly memory. Hold up, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're designed to protect the, the, the dispatcher's business, right? So, if you don't run anything this week in your contract, there's a number that we're going to deduct 250. Man, Victor Lepp, you're a real, you're a real soldier. I say that because, man, it takes a lot of faith to do that. Hey, OTIJ, what's going on, bro? What's going on, man? She ain't calling me day what? Yeah, I'm going to call you when I get off OTIJ. I know it's some more shit got to be to have for you. and not even calling me there. I'll tell you that. It's some more, boy. Y'all pray for OTIJ. That's all I'm going to say. Just, just pray for him. Keep him in your prayer like you do anybody else that's in trucking. If you know people in trucking, pray for him. Do that. Do that for me. Pray for him. Because this shit's serious. This shit's real serious. So I'm trying to educate because, like, most people, finances, budgets, credits, lifestyle, ain't going to afford you the opportunity to do this two times. Mr. June T said, read them first three, the first three words of June T come in, say it all on a lot of levels. Because integrity is a thing that ain't a thing no more. A lot of folks ain't got integrity. And a lot of people looking to get a free dollar right off. So get what? All right, check this out. So. You'll have a dispatch company because they they looking into their best interest as they should. They'll tell you, hey man, in the contract, we got a weekly minimum. Coincidentally, the weekly minimum will probably be about two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars, which is gonna make them earn a thousand dollars a month, whether they do some or not, or whether you choose to run or not. And in the premise of a contract, it'll say, in the event that you're not able to run or you don't run any loads, you owe us this amount of money. And people in their mind, for some reason, we got to change the way we think. Everybody think of the best outcome first. They're like, okay, shit, 250 a week, but I'm going to be running. Appreciate that, man. Hey. I'm going to be running. I ain't going to, uh, uh, uh. And then 250 all the money I'm finna make. If I want to take a week off, shit, what is 250? I'll pay that in advance. That ain't no 250. I forgot 250 on some shoes. I just do that. That's the bad case scenario in your mind. You trying to be like, okay, that makes sense. But you so new, you really don't know what makes sense. Because $1,000 a month, sometimes $1,250 a month if it's five weeks, it's a lot of money. In most cases, that's truck note. Some cases, that's most of your insurance for the month. And this is on a month where you broke your leg at the tarp of the load, and you're going to be out for six weeks. Somebody do the math on 250 a week for six weeks. Somebody do that math for me right quick. Drop it in the comments. While you at home incapacitated, your, your, your truck broke down, you stripped, you, you, you spun the clutch in it, it's slipping, or you burst, messed up an ass and fucked the rear end up in your truck, transmission went out, you're going to be out for about five, six weeks. How much you owe me six weeks, y'all? $1,500 for six still for six weeks. But that's what you sign. Like, problem with all this stuff ain't the dispatcher. It really ain't. I ain't hang on nobody that dispatch. The problem is, people not understanding. Remember I told y'all understanding the lack of chaos? It's the absence of chaos. I'm here to give you some understanding that you learn how to see through some stuff. It's the reason why I do this. $1,500 in sick, well, you get what that is. That's about half of your bills at home. Unless you live in an extravagant, ridiculous ass life above and out beyond, beyond regular people mean. Probably about three to four thousand dollars. Uh, get the home, even if it ain't nothing but skate on through, and just see so you play pace, pay the minimum on this and that and the other, and you still gonna skate three thousand dollars, forty five hundred at the most. If you got some pretty good bill, I'll get you through the month. So get what? That's over half of your bill money at home in the midst of not making no money. So what you usually will have to do is go into your discretionary fund. Hope you got a discretionary fund of the money that you had left over from when you started and the credit that you built before you started to help try and see you through that hard time. Meanwhile, looking at your bank statement, 
at the end of the month and seeing a draft every week for 250 for nothing. And like I said, ain't the dispatch fault. It's us. It's what we choose to do. Next thing, you will look in there. And like I said, that could be in for the dispatch. I mean, that's what that, that what you got to do. If, don't, if you don't want to run it, this, this, and this. But check this out. OTIJ, you don't deal with none of this shit, do it. I know. I know. Hey, look. And I want all the smoke. So I what? I'll stay cool because I'm clear. So when smoke comes my way, I'll be like, yeah, so that won't have no problem. OTI, I dispatch OTIJ. He up in here right now. See, then what I, I say, all my videos be 1,000 because the people that I be talking with and talking about and dealing with, yeah, they in the video, they know I ain't careful. Okay? Now, you got another, you got another scenario. This is this, 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 this shit, one of the more common. Ah. Uh, Really, two more scenarios. Charging a dispatch fee for every load found, regardless if you take it or not, and then writing in the same contract, no force dispatch. No force dispatch. I know some folks that say they ain't forcing you to be dispatched, but if it's a $1,000 load and they charging you, what's up, no clever name? If it's a thousand dollar loan, they charge you ten percent, and you say I don't want it. On your bill at the end of the week, they see you. They still want that hundred dollar. That's a problem. That's a problem because what ends up happening is your already lackluster ass uh, dispatcher starts to perform like bullshit. Like in the midst of not being able to find a decent load, they throw you a piece of trash that they know you're not gonna take. Going in the direction in the middle of a blizzard, they know you're not going to go. Just to say, I found a load and you don't want to take it, I'm charging you the 10% anyway. You better be glad you got P.O. box. You need to be glad you got P.O. And get what? Some of y'all got y'all real address. Y'all just fucking with the right people. That what, that what the real realness of everything is. You fucking with the right folks. You fuck with some good Christian, good God fearing. I just gotta treat my brothers the same and do it all over again tomorrow and hope out everything turns out the better. I'm gonna shoot you in your face, bitch. So sure live. Yep. Cause I ain't gonna live but one time. You ain't gonna live but one time. Why you gotta fuck my life up? Hmm? Hmm? There's some people that gonna watch this video later to be fucked out of thousands of dollars like this. Didn't never run a load. Turned down three loads for the week. Took two loads for the week. And owe somebody $900. And ain't made number five, six, seven hundred dollars Because all the loads that they didn't take and refused. Oh, you know, we wasted time finding your bitch. You ain't wasting no time finding that trash ass shit. When you pull up the high rate on the board and tell me this, the loads you done booked for me. And it's going to see out of Washington in a fucking blizzard for $2.50 a mile. Because it's the highest thing on the board. And you feel like you did something. You need killing. You need strangling on it. Oh, I found it. And I'm going to go ahead and, and, and charge you for it, even though you ain't running. Get what? If I find something and OTIJ don't want it, first thing, I'm going to call them first. Be like, man, I found one going here, here, here. It kind of rough right now, but at the same time, did what I can do, and we can get you in a spot. That I'm looking at the load that I know you're gonna be there for. If you grab this and take it over there, I'm gonna book this other one behind it that's gonna be better money. And over your average of miles for the week, you're gonna probably average such and such, such number. If we can do that, do you want it? You want that? And he'll take me back real quick. Like, yeah, man, shit. Man, man, man red driver. Huh? Well, fuck me, red driver Alaska, goddamn. I love OTIJ, y'all. Because every time I call him, he farther than I think he supposed to be. He pulling up in place. I'm like, bro, you gonna be there in about another hour or two. And he's like, nah, man, I made it last night. I'm like, God damn, nigga, let me find some. Shit. It's a hustling ass. Man, let me find some. Give me time to find some shit. Nigga, I gotta sleep too. Shout out OTIJ with your hard hustling. Good running ass, nigga. Boy, God damn. I shout out some hard working motherfucker when they doing right, man. I just, it is what it is.
Yeah, I was just like more than likely, I take it. Yeah. For the most <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but then at the same time, I'm gonna dispatch and there's another point. A lot of dispatchers ain't never drove a truck. A lot of dispatchers ain't never, they ain't never been around some people that drive trucks. They might have rolled passenger side of a truck. You ain't did a motherfucking thing on the road, deserve to dispatch shit. Find yourself something else to do. That's what you need to do. Which is lack of understanding. You're plenty of chaos you're putting on these people's life out here. Instead of dispatching them in circles and they ain't getting no money, but they burn up all the fuel they can burn up in life. And then they burn it up and they ain't using mud flap. Click the link in the description below for towels and mud flap right now. If you ain't got it, if you ain't got mud flap, add the video, look at the description, click on mud flap app, open that shit up when you get out of this video and save you some money. Save you eight, nine hundred dollars a month. And then it'll make the bill that come from the dispatcher for the month look a little more reasonable. Now, dispatch, you didn't take the load, but I'm going to charge you anyway. Or uh, you dispatch a load, get there, and there's a truck order non-use, and you dispatch too big of a bitch to even call and get the truck order non-use, but yet they still want the motherfucking money for the load. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another thing, dispatch. Most of them some bitches. They ain't going to negotiate now, low. Most of them don't negotiate on your behalf. I'm just going to tell you this. Let the cat out the fucking bag and let it be what it's going to be. Most people pick up the highest rate. They call. They might ask for another $100. They feel like that's a real negotiation. OTIJ, put this up on here, my nigga. Let, let them know what it is. When I call and I see it $500, I'll try to get $1,000. They might have talked me back to 750 and that's where I kind of want to be anyway, but the rate kind of funky right now. But it might say $1,500, i say $21. Let me, uh, yeah, I see y'all got a post for $1,500. Could you do $21? Oh, we ain't even got $21 in it right now. Well, can you do $2050? <laughs> We're finna eat down on your fucking ass. Again, you know when they come back, huh? I mean, best we could really do it, 18. Hell, I wanna try and get number 16 when I call you. Appreciate it. And that's the problem. The unseen and the unknown. And then you got people that got brokerages. That you would think that because they got brokerages, that they would be a little bit more applicable to have you dispatch and have a fire-ass price and everything. But get what? A lot of folks that got brokerages don't know how to fucking negotiate contracts. Let me say that again. A lot of people that got brokerages don't know how to price freight. A lot of people, they got brokers just use software to price freight. Well, I told y'all about that goddamn spreadsheet. Hell one, but there's a whole lot of shit that spreadsheet can't tell you. Whole lot of shit freight wave can't tell you. Whole lot of shit that little heat map on deck gonna have your ass out there in the cold. There ain't no heat over there where they say it was. Ain't about no technology all the time. There's some shit up in here and up in here that you can't match with a computer. So, we got, we got the, we got the weird ass percentages. We got the hitting you across your head even though you didn't pull the load. We got the motherfuckers that's over here not negotiating the load. And you sitting in the middle of a fucking truck stop at Albuquerque, New Mexico, in one of the most dead areas in the country waiting on somebody to find you something. They're telling you just wait another day. Just sit there. One more day. Some gonna pop in the morning. And get what? Them same people ain't never been in a truck before. Cause anybody that ever been in a truck know before, if you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, you don't have a fucking hazmat, you might want to run for the hills if you can't find nothing that first day because shit's not going to get any better. And the fact that you out there and they can see there's a lot of trucks out there, guess what? When the shit do get better and you see a load, they finna bust you on your ass to get up out of there. You talking about a $1.20 for a whole truck load. High shot, 65 cent a mile, get you back to Amarillo. Hmm? Spread shit ain't never said nothing about that, did it? I know it. It called running every state you can run. Taking every rate you can take. And get what? All my fucking time they start from the bottom. Get what? Hey, what you do? You started from the bottom and learn how to take advantage of people? Or you started from the bottom and really learn trucking? And lab a certain lot of leave. 
while you're sitting there wondering if they looking or not, or is everything going to be okay? Is it going to pop up? I tell people just like this. If you want to know if your, if your dispatch is pretty good or not, man, don't you know these are actual, my boy said I want a Cuban now. Bro, don't you know these are real, man? One of my army buddies brought them back. Uh, from Cuba with them. Boy, that taste of Havana, bro. I'm, I'm talking about the human door fully stocked up in there, bro. I'm talking about, man, I, man, they show me. Boy, they be showing love, bro. People look back and be like, man, I just thought about you, bro. Man, that shit you did back in such and such and such and such in 2000, whatever, whatever. Man, man I was over such and such play. Boy, as soon as I seen him, I thought about you. I just want to see, uh, you still fuck with them? I'm like, yeah, how much they is? Don't worry about how much they is. You still fuck with them, don't you? I do. Sure do. Shout out Norris. Appreciate you, Norris. Norris. Oh, wow. Overdrive says, New York citizens, New York is paying citizens to report idling trucks. Please don't idle your truck in New York. They got like a two-minute idling rule in New York City. That shit just popped up on a notification in my uh, email from, from another uh, 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 constituent of mine. Said uh, New York has announced that they paying people to snitch on y'all. So if you're sitting there with your truck running and it's ice cold out there and you're trying to keep warm and you don't have an APU, just know you might wake up in the morning with a hell of a ticket. So idle in New York is a, is a fucking crime. It's a crime. Alright. Oh, okay. That what? Man, OTI Jason, my idea here before I put that uh dollar mile miss on my truck. Hell yeah. On a, on some heavy shit. On some heavy shit. The only way they get a dollar mile on my truck, that shit got to just fit on the top deck. It can be there by next Friday sometime and and I can build off of it. And, and don't call me no wind resistance. And that motherfucker got to be the only thing within 150, 200 miles. Because I showed dead head. I, you looking at dude that dead head from Denver probably like seven months ago. All the way to Amarillo just to get what I want. It made it make sense. All right. Now, another area. Well, what happens if I got a dispatcher and I've signed one of these Contracts. I don't talk about the contract because, like I said, it's in the best interest of the other person that's making the business to make a contract that's in their best interest. And your ass that's signing ain't reading and ain't thinking about what the real consequences of what you're signing and think these consequences ain't going to be there when you try and pull out. Hmm. A lot of you folks got y'all on auto draft anyway. So, just, just know, just to keep them from getting their money, you got to turn off a bank account and run away ahead for the hill. So, they're going to get their money. Or oh, they gonna sue you. Mm -hmm. This the mad part. When you finally figure out, which most everyone knows, I've told y'all a thousand times, even OTRJ know this. Dispatcher job temporary. A dispatcher's job is temporary. So what most dispatch companies do is they put a termination clause in their agreement, in their contract. And when you sign it, most of the time it says, hey, before you leave, we need X amount of days notice, which might be 30 days. So at the least, you can say, hey, man, I don't like this. And it's January the 1st, February the 1st, I don't want to do this anymore. Sometimes that right there alone is enough because you gave them notice. They could be replacing your truck with another truck for they for they dispatch service to have the same amount of revenue. And they also keep you on the hook for another four weeks. And if you just want to quit that day, you still gonna owe them a thousand dollars because four weeks at 250 a piece is a thousand dollars, whether you run or not. Remember? Remember? So you might want to not give them 30 days notice and quit. You might want to give them 30 days notice and really run them 30 days. Be more advantageous for your pocket instead of just having an air. You can at least be making some money before you go. But in most cases, people get so frustrated and tired of the shit and can't see how they're gonna make no money. They just be like, fuck them this bad people and just walk away. Well, if you got a walk away contract, walk away. But get what? A lot of contracts ain't walk away. 
these penalties advised. Some folks want $100. Some folks want $500. Some folks want $1,000. Some folks want $1,500 if you leave without notice. And we'll just say it like this. That little ACH form that you filled out at the first beginning, it is what it is. They're going to get that money. And the bank going to get it to them because you authorized them to have access to your bank account. And get what happens after you leave. They still got access to your fucking bank account. Get what? A year and a half later. You don't fuck with them no more. They doing kind of bad. What's to say they won't commit bank fraud to take everything you got? We used to call the underlay for the overplay. My boy, underlay for the overplay. That's what you call Down the line. Down the line. Wipe your mother's nose down the line. They can wipe your nose down the line. Mm -hmm. So we just got the overlay for the underplay. You think it's all good. You just live up and all that. Next time I see you, tear your ass up. You get what? Next time they draft, they going to tear your ass up. You're going to be running, doing your own thing. You're looking at the bank account. It's like $1,500, miss. And you'll be ready to call the customer. Man, that's in the contract you signed. That you signed that. Now, that ain't that dude fault for doing his business. Like that, he run his business how he want to run his business. Your job to be aware of what's going on and not fall into that shit and not fall, not sign no predatory shit. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's just like the predatory ad credit card where they be like, "Well, you got zero percent entry, but if you ever late or you miss a payment, oh, that could never happen. I never follow hard times. I never miss that minimum. That minimum is nothing. I that never did that. Well, okay, well if you miss it, you know your zero percent go to twenty nine point nine. The highest amount legally allowed by law in a lot of places. And get what? They waiting on you fuck up. Just like dispatch. They waiting on you get tired of that bullshit. Instead, charge the loads you ain't took. And shit you running ain't worth what it paying. And you burning just as much fuel as you making them money. And we get what? They know you're going to get tired of that shit. And when you do, they want the five. They want the 15. They want the five. So do. So do. And I'm going to say this again. And I'm going to keep saying it to the end. You folks ain't your fucking friend. You don't owe nobody no favor. And you ain't got to sign shit you don't agree with. You folks ain't your friend. I don't give a damn what it sound like. I'm about as friendly as trucking get. And y'all see, I ain't that friendly. I'm about as friendly as trucking gets. Everybody else just smile and act like it. And y'all a member of my fucking fan club. And y'all a hit on my Patreon. And y'all follow me on Instagram. And we're boys. And da 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 Y'all ain't my motherfucking boy. Y'all my subscribers. And y'all my viewers. And I got love for y'all. But I ain't gonna never have you feel like, hey man, if you come click on all this stuff right here, you know that makes us family. No, you you go over here click the link. You be one of Haven's hitters. You can be a Haven hitter, and you you be a part of it. And get what? When I when I show a place, and man, I drop my location where y'all come and fake ass love. That about the, that about the same kind of love the gang showed you. Oh, oh, I want to say that. But the folks really love you. They want to let you go to jail for them. And they really love you. Oh, no, no. We ain't going to go down there, bro. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. We ain't not going to talk about that street shit up in here tonight. We're not going to do that. We're not going to talk about the street shit up in here tonight. We're going to keep that trucking bait. All right. So, basically, in conclusion, it's a trap. Yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, that ain't no, nope. show like June 10, I ain't going down that road. But the parallels are very similar. That's why I say I'm trucking like I'm trapping. Because it's so similar, man. Everybody got this thing. Every B got this thing out at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's already too sensitive out here. Yes, sir. And then you too, I already too sensitive. And, and just, just before I leave, I want to let y'all know something. Like, we're going to do a little race and try to see if y'all can tell somebody to tell somebody. Boop, boop. Press the subscribe button. If you're new to the live, press the subscribe button. We're going to try and get 10,000. We're a mediocre number. I know it is. We're going to try and get 10,000 subscribers. 
Get what that equates to me and money. Nothing. Forty, fifty dollars. Nothing. That shit's nothing. I'm telling you, nothing. Because one, I've been shadow banned long time ago. Long, long, long time ago. Not tripping. Because people that need to see it or people that meant to see it, going to see it. I don't give a fuck. If you search hard enough, you'll find me. If somebody that's on here that really be down with what we doing up here trying to see other people make it, tell somebody, they'll know how to get to me. But as far as YouTube pushing me out there like they push other people, I'm not buying no motherfucking uh, subscribers. I'm not doing no paid promotions on fucking YouTube. I'm not doing none of that stuff. You know how the clown used to be the first thing when you search on YouTube? YouTube, first thing you search on Google, first thing you search on this, and that and the other, and because these folks put money behind this shit. Your, your favorite YouTube trucker, high shot drivers and all this shit. They taking money out the truck or either out of the YouTube that they get, recycling it as an investment to get more subscribers, more followers, we lead to more money. And that's the way you grow that shit. I don't got my ass on this shit. Like, I make my money trucking for real. Ain't no cap on the you know. Ain't no cap on the work. Ain't no cap on where I be. I be live. I sat right here. See, there's a difference between posting that they low pay this, this, and this, and y'all actually seeing that they low pay this, this, and this, because I run it on live and post it in the community. For real. I run that shit and post it on the community. And get what? Get what? Get what? The fucked up part about it is, I got like 600 some video, and I can tell when the shadow ban happened. Get when I get when it happened. When I started telling a lot of the realness what was going on, and I stopped being really nice about it. Oh, when I was sitting in the truck when I first started hot shot. Hi, this is Jonathan, and welcome back to the Hot Shot Haven. I'd like to give you a review on this Diamond C trailer versus this Gator Main trailer. Look at the differences in the features and this, that, and the other. When I said, man, fuck a bitch and it, fuck a hating and it, mammy, all that old shit and clown ass bitch won't talk about my health and all that shit, I shoot that bitch in the eye socket if I see him in real life. I'm still mad at that bitch to the day. But get what he did. Every video I put up, report. Every time he lied on a video and I left the truth in one of his comments, report and erase. What that does is it develops, it develops into YouTube saying, hey, this guy might be trouble. This guy, and get what? This guy is being trouble to somebody that's got 100,000 subscribers and at the time he probably ain't got but 1,500. So, get what, in the way this works, the revenue that we make off the clown far outweighs what we make off this guy right here, no one knows. So, guess what, we need to push him out of the way and keep this money train going with this clown. And that's good business. You know what it is? One thing about it, I know, the truth gonna stand every day, all day. I told y'all. 2030, the truth still going to be the truth. Shit don't make money. Shit don't make sense. It's a clown ass way of doing it. You're lying to everybody. And you're fucking everybody you know. I said it. And I'm standing on it because that's what it was. And I don't know what it is now. I don't give a fuck what the clown doing. But I'm telling y'all why I ain't 15, 20, 30, 50,000 subscribers with the type of shit I'm getting out on the channel. It ain't hard. But get what? You guys can help me. If everybody on the live right now go get two people that they know fuck with this shit, don't even fuck, they ain't gotta fuck with it. You want some? You want? We want? To, you want somebody to hear some good life stuff? Tell them to holler at me. You want to hear some good trucking stuff? Tell them to holler at me. You want to hear some weird ass stories out the street? Every once in a while, come holler at me. But at the same time, if it got me about some theatricals and my shit looks cinematic. That shit not going to make you rich. That shit make them rich. So you got to understand, there's a difference between clicking on shit and people having 30,000 people membership of this shit, paying them $50 a month, and they collecting a million dollars off dumb motherfucker that ain't learning nothing. Oh, wait a minute. You learning something, but you learning from some people that don't know what the fuck they doing. See, that's the problem. 
Like, let's go back to the beginning of the channel to talk about this. I didn't make a channel as soon as I started high shot. Sure didn't. I had a fleet of five when I started making these videos. But get what the difference between my fleet of five was. I owned two trucks. All right. I had two trailers. All right. And I had three owned operators at the same time. Meanwhile, we got two, three, 150, 200,000 motherfuckers subscribed to a nigga that's renting trucks. Don't own nothing. Leasing trailers that he leasing from, that he paying notes on at the same time, which is a good business model if you buying the right equipment. And then don't know how to buy equipment. How you going to put an auxiliary tank on a rental truck? How you going to be productive as you can be with a trailer got torsion axles on it? No offense, Danny. I know you went and bought the clown's materials and his trailers and stuff, and you making money off of them because you didn't buy them to run high shot. You bought them to lease them out, rent them out. That's good bidding them out. But get what? The clown want to run in his personal bid. Get what? Them torsion axles ain't shit, bro. And you know it. You the, the all type of trucking. You know that shit is for horse trailers. That shit's for a better ride, but that shit ain't for capacity, and that shit show don't ain't for keeping your wheels straight up and down. Them motherfuckers do that, 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 that. Eventually. But at the same time, the rental part, that's a great business model, but get what? Why you gonna rent trailers to motherfuckers that control how much money you make by what they run with some unreliable ass equipment? See, daddy know how to spruce them up, put the bearings on, new seals, serve it to motherfucker. Clown ain't even know how to do nothing to change the tire. Really, they had a tool to do that. I was astonished. I was like, how hey, motherfucker gonna have a truck come and they ain't got no tool? How fuck you got a truck coming? Your tool game ain't about nothing. Wait a minute. You bought it. I thought you bought a commercial. You said you just bought a commercial. I, what happened? You just had a commercial bill and you did that. I bought my first commercial property. You leased that shit and didn't even stay a whole year, motherfucker. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Fuck who don't like it. You got a lot of fans and I ain't one of them. Never will be. When the bitch talk about my health and I should not do this and that I should have bought a rental truck, I wouldn't have to go through what I go. Bitch, I get the job done. When I burned my arm on that dry shaft that broke the front dry shaft on my comments coming back from New Orleans, what I did? Ask Adrian. Ask Mississippi Black. He was trailing me back. Just had broke the axle on the Gator Maid trailer. I called my uh, one of my second truck. Shout out Mississippi Black. Come all the way from Mississippi down near the St. Louis with an empty trailer. Yeah, we dropped it low first. Come on with the empty trailer. Parked them bitches side by side in the parking lot. I rented a forklift. Had them drop the forklift at the truck stop parking lot. I loaded my own three loads off my trailer. Put it on the good trailer. And get what? Chain my ass up. Hook that trailer up to Adrian truck. And let him run it on back. Because get what? I don't want you burning up no extra gas. I don't want you putting no wear and tear on your truck. I'm going to use that trailer. Put that load on the trailer. I'm going to pull it all the way the way it got to go. And halfway down here, with the, with the newer trailer and the load up there secured, he trailing me with my old trailer and the other truck out the fleet. Get what? Front drive shaft, the U-joint just said, snap! Boom! I jump out the truck. I stand. I, I feel in the store. I already know that it is. Before I, yeah, well, before I even looked to see what it was, I went to the toolbox, got the impact wrench and my sockets for the impact wrench and got on under there. I said, yeah, that motherfucker done broke. what I do? Disconnect the transfer case and bungee cord the dry shelf up on the frame because it don't spin when the truck ain't in four wheel drive. So we bungee that motherfucker up, secure all the hardware in the truck so we put it back together when we get where we going. And I was off the side of the road in 30 minutes, but in the process of doing that, I bumped my arm up against that dry shaft that been in a bind for the last 150, 200 miles. That shit by 600 degrees. Third degree burn to my motherfucking bone. And a bitch gonna tell me I should have had a rental truck. Oh, man. You just, just, y'all, if y'all seen the video, y'all know I got motherfuckers in Houston that no way. That fuck your P.O. box, bitch. I'm mad about that boy. I'm mad about that shit that boy did. And still mad about it. Fuck you. Hope no nothing good happen for your ass, bitch. Hope your wire leave. I hope them babies ain't your nigga. Welcome to reality. Y'all motherfucker really don't like you. And that's why I'm shadow man, y'all. <laughs> and that's why, hey, in a nutshell, and that's why I'm shadow man, and they ain't gonna let this video go there and fight. They might get about 250, 300. Man. 
Man, if somebody tell you some shit like that, after you went through some shit like you went through, I'm in a truck stop two, three days. I done drove to Kentucky to get an ass when they told me they ain't got no ass. I had to drive back from Kentucky to Illinois, call a truck, call a truck of mine, not nobody else's truck, call a truck of mine on the number all the way from Mississippi to come get me and make this shit happen because get what? I get the motherfucking job done. Hey, a hell of a cruel guy. That's why I call him a clown. Forever gonna be a clown. I don't give a damn if he come back and make $20 million. He's still a bitch in my book. For real. Oh. It's a trick, my bad. We on the it's a trick. It's a trick. The clown. About 37%. At your mind. To be on a number that's unproductive. And a motherfucker bidding a dollar twenty, dollar thirty, dollar forty, and broadcasting on motherfucking YouTube like that's what you're supposed to be doing on a forty foot motherfucker hot shot. Hi, my name is whatever the fuck my name is. Production make it happen. Boy, I have some good ass marketing. Oh man, click on my website. I'm gonna link you guys up. And man, you click on it, da, 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 and you, you can find careers on here. And he putting people with people that's stealing money. Ain't vetted nobody. Dispatcher services. I, I still wanna know who the client Toe Pig, the fuck Toe Piglet. Y'all call the bitch ass name. Toe T O W P I G L E T. Piglet. Toe Piglet. Clown and a half, forever in a day. I'm not forever be a clown. Fuck him. Been out here seven, eight years, ain't learned a goddamn thing. Been everything from the gentleman all the way up to the owner, ain't learned a whole ass thing. I don't care nothing about no motherfucker don't like it. They report it, say what they want to say. I, I, I keep the eye on me wherever I go. When I pull up and pump through, that bitch is appendix carry locked and loaded for one of you motherfuckers. Get what? I come from a place where if your mind ain't right and your shit ain't to go, they gonna kill you. So my mind PTSD to this shit. I'm fucked up in a truck. Y'all just don't know. This shit really helped save my life. This, this truck has sa helped save my life and my family and my kids made all this shit possible. And motherfuckers want to play and make people turn around on the investment of a lifetime that they done made, quit their job, brought all their 401k out, got their soul car, did all type of shit, neglected their kids and everything on what they wanted just to start this shit to make a better future. Then somebody take 37% and dispatch you like an asshole. Cause he famous. Fuck your famous ass. It's a more famous ass clown, but ain't never one of them clowns. Never person that came up on the shit I was doing and told me that if I had a been did what they just did, I wouldn't be in their position. I wouldn't be in the hospital. I wouldn't be all fucked up and yada, yada, yada. And I hope somebody on here got it number. He probably fucked you too. Make sure you tell him to tune in because I don't watch him. Man, watching me. Man, call my phone for advice. That man do one hour consultations with me. Fuck you, me. Fuck you, me. An employee mine ain't gonna get you nowhere. I don't give a damn how, how internet savvy you is, how savvy with apps you are. I don't care how savvy you are on marketing. Get what? It'll get you some money. Get you killed too. That's just like trapping. It gets you some money. Get your ass robbed and killed, too. You can be trapping and get a lot of money. You can drive McLaren if you want to and get what? Somebody won't shoot you in the face. And not because you did nothing to them. It because you who you are. It ain't. They cool when I do it. They cool when they do it. It's proud when I do it. Look that nigga said. Yeah. It's a trick. And the next person you see with that dumb ass shit going, it's a trick. It's a trick. The shit I be saying that kept some people that didn't know the way from going down that way, and it kept some people that came on YouTube and make channel not be a clown. Not try all that slick ass shit. Cause get what you already know. When I when I see it, you gonna be another bitch. Told you, you know? And I ain't no bad motherfucker. I call a spade a spade, though. Mm -hmm. And stand up on it and get what? All that friendly shit in the truck stop. I'm cool. Y'all come speak, but you better believe 
I'm going to grab that iron and see what you looking like while you walking up on me. And I do 19, 11, 20, 11. Ain't no way to carry that but locked and caught. So just say, hey, hey, how's your haven? Get my attention. Did you come on over? Don't walk up on me. I ain't no surprise type person. I'm going to say it again. Don't walk up on me in no truck stop. I had somebody flash some lights at me one night in the truck stop. Lad. We got flat them light back in. We're glad to see them and went on by my bed. But you see me pumping some fear? You better say something before you walk up on me. And that go if we in New York City. They say don't have it. I got it. Don't walk up on me. You know what I'm saying? Say, hey, hey, how's your hey? And then you come on or don't you walk up do 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 how's I hate them? No man. That just L Y. I'm fucked up to a lot of stuff. Like some stuff I'm not playing about. Like as you can see, my health, my life, anything dealing with my livelihood and y'all livelihood. Anything got something to do with y'all losing y'all family cause what somebody say, I ain't with it. And I'ma tell you they bullshit. My boy said the cig all day on him. I'ma get out, man, get what? I'ma get. I'm going to do a 320XL. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a 320XL, and I'm going to send it out there to Nevada and get that chunk port did. Because I like that X macro, but I don't like the fact that the end of it ain't ported through the barrel. Because... It's kind of gimmicky when, hey, John, what's up, John? Hey, that was my good friend right there, John. What about he going to shoot a tick off a deer ass at a thousand yards? That boy real humble. That boy get out there, they C5 and, <laughs> boy, hey, shout out John, man. John come off the oil well, did some, did some consultation with me. He was intending on going straight into it. You know, he had bought a high shot trailer. It was at the house, paid for my boy was at all rig and everything. And he said, like, man, I think I would rather, you know, do the big rig. And, you know, I gave him some advice. I'm like, man, you know, especially with that big rig, the event is so big and everything, you want to make sure you're ready. So you might, you know, take a little time, go to a reputable company that do flatbed, get you some real good training, get a chance to fuck up their equipment instead of your own. And, and, and then you come out after you say even more money, and do exactly what you really want to do, how you really want to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, what, slow down so you can speed up. You feel me? And John, man, I'm so proud of you. He done had a lot of adversities and shit, like all of us that had adversity, man. But dude keep pushing. He keep pushing. He a real hustler. See, like, the country boy right here, y'all, you can't stop. Well, I'm telling you, they hard stop a country boy right now because what thing about it, we know how when, it, when, 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 when it's going to get tough, the tough get really, really going. You know what I mean? It's been tough all our life. But shout out John, man. What's all up in there? That's my dog right there. I can't say no good stuff about him, man. Uh, Mr. Jones, he said that uh, Taurus PT92, 16 round clip. Send him to your PB, brother. I'm a fan of that Taurus. Yep, 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 yep. But a gin early. Oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, man, hey, did <laughs> my mama in there said, man, <laughs> but you know he even did something. <laughs> Shout out to Nietzsche Webb. Y'all ain't know that. All them comments, y'all be seeing Denitra well, and she be in the like, that's my mama. Like, when I say, oh, my mama, y'all, I'm not capping. I'm, I'm not a cat, but then me, I'll tell you the real live me. This ain't no YouTube me. This ain't not, this some shit that really, really, really life or death. The whole trucking, the whole trucking, the whole just life and journey. This shit too important. This shit too serious. This ain't nobody else's job. This your business. You feel me? And at the end of the day, this is going to make or break your life. I'm telling you. Because the time that you're going to waste fucking around with this and the money that you're going to spend fucking around with this 
If you don't do something in the first year and a half, two years, it's going to be a serious problem in your life. This shit caused you to move housing, cars, and families. Housing, cars, and families. Fuck the first two. Housing, car. I've been without a house before. I've been without a car before. But your family being, that's a whole nother subject. And get what? It don't take no rocket sign. All I don't like to say is I hope she really love you. I hope you can I hope you can clown out out right here and she still love you. That's all I like to say. I hope you clown out all them promises you made, all that money you say you're gonna bring home. Don't do it. And I hope she still love you. That's the one for you. She really the one. Yep, that's how that's gonna go. And if you think she gonna keep going to work paying all the bills and you stay the fuck off in the truck every week and don't produce and come home with zero dollars and shit like that and get the dispatch more money than you bring home and getting the diesel people more money than you bring home and getting everybody else more money than you bring home. Just see how long you gonna have a home. So y'all know that channel Shadow Bag. I'm giving you some good life shit. Yeah, it, it been Shadow Bag. It's clown, clown. It, it's not just the clown. We had another clown in Atlanta, but I don't call his name because that man ain't never with nothing bad on me. He ain't never said nothing personal to me. So I don't call his name. And he was in Atlanta, now he in Florida, and he, he got classes, he got shit for you to rent, he got stuff you to lease all to, he got mentorships, he got all that shit. And get what? I don't even speak on him. So sure don't. I don't even speak on him. You get what? The clown would be an afterthought if it wasn't for a motherfucker mouth. All that keyboard warrior shit. All that your keyboard. I'm real life. I'm just three dimensional. Fuck that keyboard shit. Three dimensional problem with me. You got a three dimensional problem when you fuck with me. I'm not type of shit. I'm gonna find a load that goes by your house. I ain't got my ass on all that back and forth that I never have. Anybody know me? I either get away around you or I'm gonna come back around you. Yeah, figure out how that go. Figure that out for yourself. I'm either get away around you and stay away around you. Or I'm gonna get away around you. I'm gonna holler at you. I'm gonna holler at you. Just remember what you said. You know it. Yeah, man, I still got the air 10 is outside, man. Matter of fact, tomorrow I got to go get a couple of tires for the trailer. I'm going to be back working tomorrow. I ain't going nowhere, though. I'm going to do a strict little maintenance day. I got to rehab some shit on the Peterbilt that that, that that fell by the wayside in the lab about a month and a half. That motherfucker got treated bad, man. Trailer. That motherfucker got work these done. I need mean, a couple of ties on there. I'm gonna grab a couple of new mud flat for the truck and get some more eyes and then stuff and just get a square back way the way it really need to be. Cause that motherfucker have taken a punishment over the last 30 to 40 days. Motherfucker really punished that setup bad. Bad. I'm talking like seven thousand dollar worth of bad, man. Y'all just don't know how I be feeling sometimes. That's why I said, man, if I don't play with me, play with your mammy. Don't play with me. I got too much shit going on. Too much. Y'all, if y'all stayed on to the end of the line yesterday, y'all know I talked to one of you know, of, of two retired M dot officer, D O T Highway Patrol officer. The first thing he told you, remember what I told you about two years ago? Don't let nobody else run your stuff, cause they ain't gonna run it the way you do. I ain't let nobody run my stuff, but at the same time, I got what he's saying. For real, I got what he's saying. Hey, Victor left. Did you get that little nugget in there about them, about them inspection? How I fixed it, how I fixed my safety score that time. Them boy would get caught. Boy got caught with that dope. And da, da, da. I'm gonna do a live about that. You know, it's off the safety score now. Me and the dude still cool. I can talk about it. I ain't gonna put his name in or nothing, but I'm gonna educate y'all on what to do when they get caught with that grass in your truck. Mm-hmm. What you got to do. And if it don't involve running from the problem, you better not run from them because that bitch gonna come tap you on your ass. Oh, yeah, Mr. John T. Man, I grass in the truck. Oh, shit. 80 miles an hour in a 55 zone with a load on it. Another motherfucker. I got some story. They all off the safety scope now, so I can 
Like I talk about shit, statute of limitations gone off for it. The people ain't around. We still cool. And I talk about it. It wasn't, I'm shit. I paid the money. I had to deal with it. I'm the one did supervisor level drug courses and all type of stuff just to make it look real, real good. Because get what? Behind that, your head gonna have a safety audit. Nah. Not a new entry audit. Not a... Uh, uh, a compliance on you're gonna have a safety investigation yeah they had three of them so you get to ask these folk that have been on youtube about a year year and a half maybe two years that ain't really went through shit they ain't then i'm gonna fucked up some money bought some more equipment because they fucked up some money with the first equipment didn't know nothing about trucking a high shot and had to go back and rethink the whole thing and it looked good man get a new truck and new this and that bitch that's the shit you supposed to did at first if you knew what the fuck you was doing you probably be at 18 wheelers by now um, if you're a guru and you do all this oversight and you making all this money, why you ain't got a low boy? If you love oversight so much, if you love heaven, why you ain't got a low boy? Some shit got to make sense now, eventually. Check it in, Trucker Elmo, Greenville, Mississippi. What's up, baby? Man, my brother lost his CDL license for two years for speed. And get what? The best thing I can say about the whole thing, Richard, about that, about that 80 and the 55 incident, I was running non-CDL high shot. He got labeled a super speeder, but he got to keep his license. Anybody in the comment, put a one in the comment if you ever heard of a super speeder. One in the comment, you ever heard of a super speeder? They got that. That's an actual thing. Like math is a thing. A super speeder. And if you if you put one in the comment, if you ever heard, if you haven't heard of it, you can put that too. But this is a good question. At what point do you go from being a speeder to a super speeder. Anybody in the comment? At what mile an hour cutoff do you go from being a regular speeder to a super speeder? In most states now. Where he was, I think it was, uh, I won't lie, Arizona. Mr. Jones T, absolutely right. Y'all check the comment. Check the comment. And it's a different kind of ticket. I swear to God it is. Now he had to pay that ticket. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't, I ain't paid, I ain't take no credit for paying that ticket. He paid this, he paid the ticket and everything. He did what he supposed to, have to do. He didn't run from the problem. And we worked a lot of shit out together, as you should. Because I would say it like this: the clown had somebody get caught with drugs. Oh, who he caught? On a motherfucking Sunday. That was that, that was that one hour consultation I had went off about in that video. When he had, when I screenshot put in the community that he sent me the hundred dollars because he sat on the phone with me and got all that good information. And then get what? I was like, bro, you know I don't do this for free now. Send me something. You know I'm finna buy some sandwiches for some homeless people. And the man never sent me nothing. It took me to get on here and front the bitch out for him to look back and just be like, man, let me go on here and get him this hundred dollars because this hundred dollars finna cost me a real headache dealing with somebody that don't play about his money. We grown. If you want to play with money, stay in a child place and play with your money. But if you're a crowd grown ass man for what he doing out here, and I charge a hundred, you better pay me. Especially if you had the privilege to even have my real number. He's blocked every kind of way he could be blocked, yeah. Like he'll never sip from the well of knowledge over here ever again. Fuck his problems. I ain't got no help for him. I got my own problem, and I got problems I'm going to help y'all with. When y'all call, get y'all consultation, probably one of the best conversations you'd have had about trucking. But get what? He'll never get another one. Fuck him. That's the reason he in the situation he in now. Won't listen and think you know everything and think that YouTube and trucking and trucking on YouTube is the same. And no disrespect my boy High Shy Ben over there. High Shy Ben told y'all in a video on Instagram the other day. Y'all wonder why I ain't posted nothing in a while. It cause I'm working. I been told y'all. Motherfuckers that really out here hustling hard 
ain't really got time to put up a lot of videos. You can do it, and then you can make a compilation where you can put up a weekly video, and you can take time, but then more editing. But he told y'all the realness of what I've been telling y'all. Motherfucker, they really trucking like this, trucking like they trapping. <sighs> A everyday video probably not gonna happen. Not an in-depth one. You might get you a 10 or 11 minute video about some stuff and get you some fresh cinematography and get you a nice ad B-roll and some more shit. Oh, they hustling, Mr. June T. No, uh-uh. How should I be in here? They, they out there rolling. They hustling. They really trucking. But at the same time, been had to tell them on Instagram. Y'all, y'all wonder why I been on YouTube and then I ain't posting nothing in a while. I'm out here working. As you should be. That that's what you supposed to be doing. But that's what I told y'all. That's why I don't make a lot of videos. I go live. I got the privilege to go live. I'm gonna go live because guess what? Time is money. And I want to help people, but I ain't got time to be sitting up editing no video for two, three hours out of my day. I got invoices to run, trucks to figure out, mechanical stuff to do, people to pay, shit to get paid from, and loads to find for the whole next day and next other week for three, four, five people. Get away. I ain't got time to edit no video for three, four hours a day. Fuck my life up trying to stay on YouTube, as y'all saw the clown do. You ain't but one person. We all got to remember that. Now, I work like three people. But you ain't but one person. You got to prioritize stuff. To the point where now, my guy understand, he put himself in a position to where he ain't got to really upload every day. And he need to be making content from trucking. But you got to be trucking. So he trucking. He doing his best. And the boy grinding over there. Shout out to the Parsha King. Shout out High Shot Ben. I love y'all boy. Because you be grinding. And y'all ain't lying. Y'all trying to help people too. But the reality of the situation is. Ain't but 24 hours in a day. No. No, 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 no. I come out here to puff on the Cuban. On a Cuban round, I ain't doing no puffing, I ain't doing no smoking, I don't do pack tobacco, I ain't got no cravings or none of that shit. I don't take these on the road with me at all. Listen to me, at all. You ain't seen no smoke come out of my nose, I just puff and go. But these were a gift, and I appreciate Nars, taste of uh, the, the Cuban round, taste of Havana, and we appreciate them, but it's a no, 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 player. No. Nah. We puff sick, all right, you can't smoke it. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Perfect whole cutter and everything. I'm a connoisseur, but at the same time, you don't smoke a cigar. People that smoke a cigar, they high tolerance as fuck, bro. If you if you actually pull it and inhale this thing, man, I'd be on the floor somewhere. Yeah, you be, <laughs> Mr. Jones, you can't inhale the Cuban. You can, but you ain't going to like it. <laughs> you can. You can, just like people say, you can chew tobacco and swallow that. You can. You'll be drunk as a fool. You're going to be fucked up. You can. You can do a lot of shit. <laughs> you fuck yourself up. But nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, nah back smoking in any other way, man. I, I feel like that was one of the greatest habits that I ever broke. And I don't even cry. I go in there and see a ton of, I got a box of black and miles, a better of fact. In somewhere up in there, I ain't never been open. Nah, I don't want that shit. Hell no. Hell no. Then I found something else to do with the money. Shit, I'm a, I'm a number guy. I was like, when I say that much, man, I can afford to do it. That basically the insurance on AMG every month. <laughs> That's for all these black and I do that day. $5, $6 a day. Six dollars a day, thirty days. I ain't missing a day. Shit, six thousand, eight hundred eighty dollars, and shit. The insurance on the goddamn AMG was one twenty-five. Uh, full coverage with low deductible. I think I was gonna do that, and that wasn't what I was thinking about. But once I did the, the numbers on what was going on, and I'm like, eh, it's about fifteen hundred dollars a year, and uh. I can insure an AMG for about nine a year. I just uh, think that's a better use of the money. And I've been enjoying that motherfucker too, boy. Come down to that motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah,
I ain't just dude. I'm the dude that tell y'all stack up assets. Keep this shit. Don't go from one thing to the next. Nah, no, 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 no. Hell no. Nah. Hey, why did? Why did? Why did? That the old toy convert out of the train, man. I put that style in there, y'all. But hey, what this is? I'm gonna hey, hey, and I'm gonna swoop back real quick. <laughs> Why have a shit in the garage? Some shit in the garage. It's a truck in the garage, man. Yep. I got some more stuff to do to this car, man. I got some more stuff to do to it, man. I was going to take the Atlanta and get the two sunroof put in it. And dude got, got a little man. Let's see, take it up. Hold on. Yeah, y'all see, I've been working like a motherfucker, man. I ain't clipped up behind me, so I ain't got my ass on. I'm trucking, man. This one, this ain't top priority, because I don't even be in the garage like a YouTube. There ain't no top priority. Hold on. Let's see if I go get some keys right quick. Go get some, get some keys right quick, see. <laughs> John Tain said that just sound good. Oh yeah, that 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 hey, there's a little bit more dead to that motherfucker since the first time. But at the same time, yeah, I've been slowly but surely just slipping a couple part here, slip a couple dollars on the deal. You know. I know when I first started on, I was full speed ahead though. I was full speed ahead on that motherfucker, but get what? Priority. I was trying to do some stuff in the company that was uh Potential, potentially very risky for my company. So I did some very risky shit for the last about four, five months that did not pay off. And by me knowing that it could possibly not pay off, I held my money because I had some shit going on in the company that was risky as fuck. It just was risky as hell. And I couldn't just get all the way unliquid fucking with this car. And I got the trust on the road that really, really required money to keep going. You know what I'm saying? This, this car shit, bro. People be fixing up cars and shit. It don't take that my money. It really don't. But at the same time, you know. Yeah, what it is. I know this shit didn't come to take a lot of money. I got a couple tires I got to buy tomorrow for the trailer. And I, man, please come get the 84 bro ham. My mama said, please come. I ain't got no money, DD. I just said that. I just, how many of y'all just heard me say it was a prioritizing had to go on in the company? Some really risky shit I was doing that didn't pay off worth well a damn. I ain't got no money. I ain't, not for that. I'm not finna finish this car yet because it's a line over there and the money ain't there. I'm not finna leave my car in Atlanta. And at the same time, that money right there, while I got it sitting in the driveway, I'm gonna be to flip that money three, four times with the truck. You got you can't just spend money and think it's just gonna uh come all the way right back. You got to be working and grinding and putting up money and then that up, and then you turn around and bring a car back off a of damn little frame out restoration that 84 bro ham. That car got to come off the frame. That's just a small explanation. I'm talking to my mama, y'all. Y'all understand this shit. This shit real with me. I like like dick proud over everything, man. For real. But at the same time, I'm going to do it. Give me time. Who <laughs> you put pressure on me? I'm going to let y'all hear this thing one time. I'm going to do it. I promise I'm going to do it. Let y'all see these pipe breathing little wall out this morning. Cold start.
my idol. It got to settle down. But when it settles down, hold on. Don't take your eyes off the screen. Hold on. What that is? Is that the real? Oh, yeah. Thank you, y'all. Y'all got damn fear, man. I gotta get y'all the right fear, man. So I can just show out a little bit. I can't show out too much, but I'm gonna show out a little bit. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? One in the comment, you see the cop. Play the 14 right quick, pie trash. Cold start. So, nah, I already know DD. I just talking, but I'm just talking about prioritizing and stuff. Nah, nah, mama, you already know. I already know it ain't no pressure over there at all, man. One thing about it. Family. But yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Hey y'all. Uh, like I said. She's gonna be ready. Oh, the reason. I didn't just let that motherfucker go just then. Okay, my bad, my bad. Everybody back? Yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna show you how to read name just get it all the way to being a little on park it. They all more bumper to bumper. Yeah. <laughs> Man, man, Darren. Darren, y'all, Darren got, got some shit going on. That dude right there got them door slammers and stuff. Hey man, he got the real race car. But yeah, y'all see where that y'all see where it parked it, like how close it is to the AMG. I was about to do the full little, you know, this thing pod trash and it don't care nothing about burning out. Them six and a half inch lips on the back. And them trays in the front. The reason for, but at the same time, it don't care nothing about it getting crazy. It don't, it get crazy. But at the same time, I ain't want to get crazy in no tan on my damn car. So, yeah, I ain't, I ain't had a room to really play with it, play with it. So, I ain't just let it go get crazy. But, uh, yeah, man, this thing actually will stand there and turn a complete 360 with, without doing nothing to the steering wheel. Just sit there, hold the gas, and that motherfucker burn real. Hey. Ain't my garage a disgrace, y'all. That's what that is. Oh, statue of limitation. I ain't got this truck no more. I don't do that no more. They stole that truck. Fuck them. Huh. Y'all want buy it? Anybody want to buy it? Hmm. Why everybody incriminating themselves? I let this shit ride out, and that shit ain't of no consequence no more. Y'all can see it. What that is. Their pride might be telling y'all, get the fuck up out that truck. Get that shit up out that truck. Contrary. Fuck the EPA, cause they be on some bullshit anyway. Shit ain't about no motherfucking planet. It ain't about saving the planet. It's about keeping money going in a circle to the people they need to go to. But anyway, I'm out of here. Trash ass garage. Y'all seen all y'all need to see. Y'all seen, y'all seen how shot have got a nasty ass garage and a clean ass house. Hold up, wait a minute. Mm, got a nasty ass garage and a clean ass house. That weird. That's a mechanic garage. This ain't a regular high shot garage. This ain't a regular trucker type garage. This is a mechanic garage for whatever need working on. So, shit need to go to, to the junkyard now. I got old trailer brakes stacked up out the ass. Rotors, old rotors. They ain't bad, but I swapped them out just because I did a whole brake and rotor job on 5'9 one time. You know, all this old bullshit. 
8K brakes, old 8K brake, 18 wheel of front brake. That's some Peter Bill brakes I ain't never been used right there. That's some Peter Bill brake ready. These the Peter Bill brakes I need to take back for the core off the drive axles. All that old bullshit. The whole 8K axle that was fucked up and bent. I need to go to the scrap yard, but at the same time, huh? Be the last of the deal. Yeah, yeah, fuck that deal. Oh, yeah, it was to a point where at the time, that shit was a long time ago, though. I used to do it so fast, it was pathetic. I had you come in on a 34-hour reset by hour number 27, your truck was back in your hand. That's what I say. The whole lot of shit folks be talking about. They tell it to their man, I got no different. Cat as a catalytic converter. Yeah, sort of. Sort of the same, sort of the same, sort of the same. Because they do have a catalyst inside, which would be precious metal that worth a lot of money. That's why them motherfuckers still sitting over there. One thing about knowing what you got. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think that might be enough for tonight. We've been on here quite a while, and uh, I enjoyed y'all immensely. I appreciate everybody, and uh, if you will, like, comment, subscribe. Go check out the Instagram, Hasha Hey. Instagram, Hasha Hey. Hey. TikTok, Hasha Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know say nothing about it. I got TikTok that got 500 and a half a million views right now. I got one TikTok, I got a half a million. I got no right behind it. I got 480,000. Got my ass on a talking or tick either. I'm trying to keep this motherfucker caterpillar ticket and talking down this goddamn highway to get the money that matter. Don't think you're gonna don't think you're gonna retire on social media and they're gonna run that here. I'm gonna stay dangerous, Mr. Jewel. Tell y'all stay legally dangerous. Yeah, hey, peace out. Hey, also shout out to GHG Hustle. I like that boy. I like that young man. He he good people. I think he good people. I think he a good gun enthusiast. He pretty safe. He got some witty video. Go check out GAG Hustle if you get a chance, man. If you like guns, you like hearing the little, 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 little talk, little conversing back and forth, they got some good shit going on. Uh, Life with OB. Love that boy. Life with OB. I'm on them gun channels. I like I like them boys. Uh, the Real Rambo J. Oh, how that Real Rambo J. I like them boys. I support. I support. But uh, y'all have a bloody night. Keep that thing between the mayonnaise and the muscle. You already know what about a, what I said about a hater and a man for real. She ain't raising right.